Hey, Sharpie. What? What time is it? It's uh, six o'clock Pacific on a Tuesday. It's prime time. It's prime time. It's prime time. I think it's time for Andy to, you know, scoot back on stage. He, 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 he did. Uh, Take it away. Ah! Take it away, Andy. What time is it? What time is it? It's prime time. It's prime time. What time is it? What time is it? Prime time. Ladies and gentlemen, Muhare and hombres. <laughs> Ona and Otoko des. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the prime time number 15 show. We've done this 15 times. Of course. Let us do it. Tonight, very honored to have district sales manager Rich Cachado with us. Hey, Rich. Hey, welcome, buddy. As always, Sharpie, who said he's not going to shave until you can go to live shows. Is that right? No yeah. more shaving yeah. for Sharpie. And your humble host, Mr. Jay Parkin. Hey, Jay, on Tuesday, on prime time. So good. It's so good. They're just... So good. Oh, I practice so good. Yeah, for that. They're so good. We obviously can tell that Andy's still in the Northwoods because of it's the good. way your backdrop looks, which is great. I, I'm glad yeah. you're enjoying yourself. Sharpie, how you doing? Wait, Andy, are you going to ever come back to California is the question. Yeah. Are you? Uh, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> okay. You'll well, know. I think you'll miss, know. We miss right. you on this side of the country. So uh, I think yeah, I miss you know, you. you're welcome back. Ah, but yeah. ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Taylor Primetime. This is the 15th episode. We have officially done 15 things. We have tonight's guest, Mr. Rich Cachado, district salesman manager district sales manager Thank but you. but what's weird is much like andy right now who's in the north woods you do not live in san diego rich what no i do not i am tonight i am in an undisclosed location in iowa des moines, des moines. it's des moines it's not undisclosed well yes but it's an undisclosed location this is the private den the private studio the private where no one knows where it is. It's Would you call it a bunker? It's a bunker. Would you call it a bunker, Rich? It is. It is a bunker, a private bunker. I would not have all this stuff in my house. I have to have it off site. So. Wow, that's amazing. Well, check this out, guitar nerds who are joining. Whoa, Sharpie, the feed is blowing up. We have people. You know what? We'll get to a hug your haters in a second, Rich. Will you hold on for a second? We have this segment of the show we call Hug Your Haters. And oh, we're gonna, we're gonna do it already. Yeah, we're gonna come back to you, and we're gonna talk about your nerd kingdom that you live okay. in right now. Okay. Uh, Andy, do you have a song for us? Sure. I'm switch it up <laughs> sure. again, Jay. I'm gonna try and play it. I'm gonna try and play it in six tonight. Okay. Just okay. for the people for who are counting. <laughs> Everybody need a hug these days Maybe now more than ever Remember to keep your hugs possibly virtual Yeah! Please stay safe And don't take the haters babe We don't know if we got haters. We don't know if we got haters. Don't know, no haters. 
on a low, no budget show. <laughs> Show. Man, Andy, you're you're never going to be able to go back to four four. Man, six eight is where that song lives. Six eight, uh, think so? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. sounded so zoomy and awesome. Uh, yeah. We appreciate your music, Andy. And you know what? Hey, uh, what what's up, Sharpie? Jay, real quick, why do we not know if we got hate mail or not? <laughs> well. We don't know if we got any hate mail this week because, ladies and gentlemen, a couple of weeks ago we broke the internet. This week, Primetime broke our email marketing system. <laughs> so, the email never made it out until today. So, we're glad to see you with us. You know what's crazy? We have more people watching now than we have ever. So, yeah, we're going to send the email out an hour before every week now. No, it's because of Rich, man. It's oh, yeah. because of Rich. You know it. You okay, know that it's because of it's the, because man, of the man and the we, we don't have any haters to hug this week. We are hugging ourselves, uh, and we are virtually hugging all of you. Thanks for joining us on a, on another week here at Taylor Primetime. You know, every time you show up, it just means we get to do this every Tuesday. It's It's really exciting. But let's go back to tonight's episode. Maybe it's because of the, the topic. We're going to be talking about understanding the acoustic guitar signal chain okay and we there is no better person to discuss this at our company well maybe there are a couple who know a few things but rich i've had you on our podcast some of you know that i co-host the taylor podcast and we've discussed some of these things before yeah but before we get into tonight's to tonight's subject let's talk about rich gachado Ladies and gentlemen, we have a myth and a legend. We have something, we have a Hall of Famer with us. We'll get into that in a second. But District Sales Manager Rich Cachado, what in the heck do you do? I've been trying to figure that out. Um, actually, I have a, um, I've been granted the opportunity to have a 10 state area in the, here in the Midwest. And I work with about 50. 354 of our dealers, Jay, and um, my job is to try to help them be as successful with the line as I can. And, you know, it goes from my background, you know, I, I have a, a degree in finance. Um, I've been working retail for, my gosh, ever since I was 15 years old, and I'm <laughs> now. And um, so I've been, been in retail for about over 50 years, and in, in, in a lot of different things. So there's things that I look at differently um, in stores and try to help people do things and, you know, help them understand the, uh, the, the product and, and understand what turns are and understand how to move merchandise around and understand, you, you know, here, here it is in, in 15 seconds. If you own a store, you tend to put the key in the lock, you walk in every day, you walk down the same aisle, your blinders are on because you're thinking about what you're going to do that day. And you walk right by the boxes that are on the floor, the guitar that's been hanging on the same hook for, you know, four months, and that's out of tune. And it's my job to try to get them to get the blinders off and look at their whole operation. It's not just Taylor. If they can be successful with everything they do in their store, then I'm, then I did my job. Man, you, you're a consultant. You are a retail, a true retail consultant. But... I try to be, I try to be. And, you know, it's it, it's it's interesting because when you try to talk to people about stuff like this, and you, and and they they look at you like you're from you know Pluto or something, and then you go, "Have you ever been to a large chain store and look at the floor? What are you talking about? Well, there's tile, there's carpet, there's white tile, there's yellow tile, there's gray carpet, there's black carpet. Do you think the carpet store ran out of gray carpet so they just took what was up? No." There, there's a reason for every single thing in a lot of these stores and they're driving you to areas and they're driving you so you see things that you haven't seen before. So part of my job is to get them to understand. You do a pretty good job, Rich. Well, thank you, Jay. By the way, I'll get, I'll get you that 20 bucks. Now. Oh, I appreciate the $20. See how it's working? Everybody yeah, knows yeah, like it. you know, that, that if I yeah. say nice things about Rich, he'll pay me. That's right. Uh, no, but keep in it. mind now, before we go any further, Andy Lund does exactly the same thing, but all over the world. 
And I look at what Andy does and we go, oh, I can take some of that because he's been doing it with Taylor a whole lot longer than, than I have. And we had Mike Austin, who was on the, you know, your show earlier. And um, yeah, we, we all kind of learn from each other and, and do what we do. I've learned more from Andy than I've known for years. Well, so I have too. <laughs> you know Not that? how to grow a beard though. I, I'm trying to figure that part out. Uh, ah. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Um, okay. So let's get into this real quick. What is your history though? What got you to Taylor? Oh, what got me to Taylor? Interesting. Um, I was, um, well, first of all, I started playing guitar when I was 10. Um, got in my first band when I was 11. Did my first gig, uh, did my first paying, real, real paying jobs when I was 14. Um, and then just kind of kept on playing. And it got to the point, if we fast forward a lot, um, I actually owned my own music store. Um, I had three locations here in Iowa. And um, then I sold those. Um, I went to work for um, another guitar company that begins with a G and ends in a son. Gibson. You Thank can... you. And, um, <laughs> Gibson. and, 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 and uh, I was recruited uh, by uh, a, a very good uh, friend yes. of all of ours, Mr. Keith Brawley, um, to work at Gibson with him. And then uh, he came to Taylor and he said, are you going to come to Taylor? And I said, absolutely. And, um, and then they said, okay, so when are you going to move here? And I went, uh, that's going to be tough. <laughs> And about six months later, I finally, um, I'd like to think my biggest sales presentation was being the first offsite um, district sales manager for Taylor ever since they started in 1974. That's pretty impressive. What also is impressive is that hygrometer you have behind you that says 54% humidity. Hey, that's not bad. Rob McGargle would be proud of that. It's pretty hey, good. It's, in, it's right in there. It's in the spot. It's it's a typical bunker humidity level, actually. That's good <laughs> yeah, for a bunker. It's bunker. It's bunker humidity. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. fantastic. But this is a good point. For a couple of episodes ago, we had Lindsay Love on from our repair team, uh, and she discussed that first thing. That first thing's first, man. You got to yep. think about the humidity. And you know what's interesting is I have uh, I have a lot of different hygrometers. And there's a couple over there and there's a couple over there, but they all read about three to 4% different. So that's why it's important to have them on multiple walls and, and, and in multiple places in your room. So we do practice what we preach. That is wild. Yes, I do. The doctor takes his vitamins. Yes. So. <laughs> Jay, that's like, that's like four star geek guitar geek there. Like, like a dude who has, three hydrometers within arm's length of him that's real dirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. well and we have other stuff. guitars in the room uh, so we, we have to take care undisclosed. of them all. okay close location undisclosed location undisclosed location don't look at my address they're not here they're ladies, undisclosed location. ladies and gentlemen uh this is wild okay how many first of all whoa you are the guitar nerd i you may be the guitar nerd this is oh. wild. Okay. I don't know. Have you Rich, met Glenn Wolf? <laughs> well, I know. Yeah. But let me ask Rick, one second, Sharp. I know you're, you want, you need to say something here, but how many guitars do you own, Rich? Well, right now I'm at 32. Um, I'm down from 40. When I hit 40, I knew I had a problem. <laughs> and so uh, I'm down to 32 right now. Oh, man. That's no problem. Sharpie. That's no problem. You Boy, had something no to problem. say, Sharpie. Oh, no, I didn't. I was actually just enjoying the feed. It's it's lighting up already, and we've got awesome. 200 people watching you right now, Rich. Hello. 200 people. Okay, here we go. We're going to dive into tonight's subject. Rich, yeah. we needed to bring you on. We had to bring you on, partly because you emailed us and said, I have a good subject to talk about. So <laughs> You lie. You lie like a rug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dad jokes are going to be galore here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rich and I have a good time together. I truly adore this man. So here we're going to go. Understanding the acoustic guitar signal chain. Yeah. Rich, what does that mean to you? What is the signal chain of an acoustic guitar? We had an episode with, with, with Terry Myers where we discussed getting a good live sound. Right, right. And, and, I'm, and I'm, I want to review a little, just a little bit of that for those that may not have 
seen that. So we'll do a little elevator speech on that as well, but then we'll, we'll move on. But the chain, you know, a lot of people are going to think of the chain as starting at their effects if they have effects. And that's not where the chain starts. The chain starts with your strings, your pick, the, uh, the, the, the wood of the guitar that you chose, because we're talking acoustic guitars. So Andy, um, tell me if you think that this makes no sense or if you agree with it. If I want to activate an acoustic guitar, I have to get the whole top bridge and braces moving. But if I want to activate an electric guitar, the only thing I have to touch is to activate the pickups. Would, would you agree with that? I would agree with that because the player is so important part of the of the whole equation, right? The Correct. way the person plays the guitar. Right. And 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 then thank you for taking the bait on that. I'm gonna pull you right in. Uh, because that's exactly where I was going with it, because yeah. <laughs> Because the player is is the, the beginning of the ultimate chain, you know. And you know, Andy and I do road shows, and Sharpie, you know, does some road shows too. But you know, a lot of the things that we hear is, I want a guitar that sounds like um, a guitar from 1971 that was recorded, you know, in so and so place. And you'll go, oh, okay, well, they used a brand new Martin, and they probably strung it with Labella or Black Diamond strings. Do you use those? Well, no, the answer is no, of course you don't. So you're wondering why you don't sound like that person or, or that right. guitar. So you, you, you have to, if, if you're gonna do this, you really have to start back. So that all being said, let's start um, with ES2. We, we already did talk about ES2, but, but for those of you that really don't know what it is, this is the side, this is a side view of an ES2 pickup. Okay, so there's the bridge and the, the pickup actually has three sensors on it. And those, you know, those screws that are on top of your bridge, if you have an ES2, don't touch them. Because <laughs> you're going to screw it all up. Um, I talked to a guy named Rob McGargle. Do you all know Rob McGargle? We've met Rob him on. once or twice. Yeah. He's a yeah, star. Rob's show. been on the show. So I talked to Rob and I said, hey, Rob, tell me, I'm going to do things, something on a signal chain. So um, what I want to know is when you guys install ES2s in the factory, how do you set them up? I thought that was a reasonable question, and so did he. What ends up happening is, is that, that Taylor designed a special torque wrench that, that makes these hex screws touch the bridge at six pounds of pressure. Now, if we go back, to, uh, Andy, if we go back to Roadshow when ES2 first came out, we all know how many pounds of pressure an under the saddle pickup is. And that answer is? Uh, um, I'm going to say about 25. 20, yeah, it's 25. actually about 50. If, if you, it's, oh. it's actually about 50. And if you have a 12 Man. string, it's a little bit more than that. So that's why ES2 is so cool, because it just takes those vibrations. And, and, there's a, and, and if you remember when um, David Hostler, who was part and parcel of all this ES2 stuff, you know, he said that everybody thought that bridges moved upside down, but they don't, or saddles moved upside down, but they move like this. So by having this pickup that hits the side of that saddle and the saddle's moving and with only six pounds of pressure, that's why ES2 sounds so good. Now, a lot of, there is a lot of people that don't like the sound of ES2. And if Bob Taylor was here, I think that he would say, that's okay. You know, everybody's yeah. ears are different. Um, the only thing that I'd like to add and this is where I begin to get the hate mail, is give me your, before you tell me you don't like the sound of a pickup or the sound of a guitar, what are your qualifications? You know, what, what, what makes you say that? And when was the last time you had your hearing checked? And let me see the graph, because I want to know the range of your hearing. You know, because if, you're, if you cut out at 15K, then you know, I don't think we have a lot to talk about. So um, <laughs> what the heck are we talking about here? Signal chain. So signal chain. Wait, what, Acoustic what'd you, guitar what'd you say? I couldn't understand. What? I couldn't hear you. No. Say again? <laughs> this is fantastic. All right. All right signal All right. chain. Let's get back signal to it. Signal chain. So here we go. You have a Taylor Can guitar. Or you have... before, huh? Before I, before I forget, Rich, one, one thing that I want to touch on what you just said, which I would like to expand upon, okay. is that. Uh, so you're you have 30 20 how many what's your problem 32 guitars is that how many oh, guitars uh, yeah 32 a, a minor problem well major because so they're all tuned regularly is it, is it even possible 
if is it even if let's even let narrow it down to electric guitars is it okay. even possible for you to say that you, that there's one electric pickup that you like the most is that a possibility in your mind no. not possible right not okay possible. so and think about think about all the electric guitar players who change the pickups in their guitars why is that well because they want something different because right. the one that came with it might not be the right one for every song and right. the right pickup for every song is a different pickup right and every player right so i i think that it's important to understand that it doesn't matter whether we're talking about es2 whether we're talking about bags pickups krk pickups or fishman pickups right every one of them is going to work well for most for the most of us for most of the time but is right. everyone going to be perfect for your ears for your song for your band for your playing every time uh, that would be a challenge. That would be asking way too much of way one much. device. Right, right, yeah. right. And that's what, like, if, if we look at electric players, why, you know, you get guitars that have, like, three pickups, and there's a humbucker in the back, and then a, a single coil in the front, and then they put a Gibson mini humbucker in the neck, and then they have push-pull pots. You know, they're, you're, they're tr you're, you're trying to build an all-in-one guitar if you can. And for the most part, you know, you can get by with that on an electric guitar. But one of the things that I remember talking to Andy Powers about when ES2 first came out and then V-Bracing came out was that he said he never knew how good the ES, I'll never forget this. I'll never, um, he, and, and this is, I think, the way he said it. I didn't know how good our ES2 pickup was until V-Brace came out because now the ES2 pick up, picks up a lot of the nuances of the woods that we're using in the guitar. So it tends to be like a maple guitar amplified sounds like a maple guitar and a mahogany sounds like mahogany. Andy, would you agree with that? Do yeah, you remember him saying that. that? Yeah, I think, and also I think the design of the, of the V class, the way that the guitar moves, the way that the, there's, there's less fighting within the guitar, there's less yep. rub, there's yep. less uh, um, bumps against each other and, 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 um, the way that the voicings work together better, allow that pickup to right. hear better and to train better. Okay, so let's say that we now say that the signal chain, we, we figured out strings, we figured out a pick, we figured out a player, you know, and now we want to plug this thing into something because we're amplifying an acoustic guitar. So if we take Sherman and Peabody, everybody remember who Sherman and Peabody and the Wayback Machine is? Anybody? Yeah, 100%. I watched them on the Brady Bunch. Bullwinkle? <laughs> anyway, you know, ever since Eric Clapton was on MTV, everybody wanted to amplify their acoustic guitar. So right. things began to, you know, really snap and happen, and people are trying to push things out and all these kinds of things. So here we are now. We fast forward to 2020. And, uh, well, actually, uh, Andy, uh, Andy, I think ES2 came out in, what, 2014? Mm. With the 814, with the uh, redesigned 814? Or was it 2016? I, yeah. So, so here we go. You're going to come out of your guitar with a very high quality cable and you're going to plug into a, an acoustic guitar amplifier. Okay. But if you're going to plug into a PA system, does everybody know what one of these are? This is a direct box. This is something that you must have. In my opinion, if you're going to plug into a PA, please use a direct box. So what's a direct box? A direct box, um, and, and I'm gonna, if, if I'm talking Greek, Jay, you're gonna have to stop me, okay? But your your guitar output is what's called high impedance. What, and if you're gonna, you, will you explain high impedance, low impedance, all of the impedance? Well, if, if you're in Colorado, you would understand better, but, um, um, what? <laughs> um, Basically, a low, you know, I, I can't get into the technical aspects of it. The only thing I know is that low impedance, the voltage, you can, you can take cables 50 feet long. You don't have any signal loss. It's a much, much richer. It's like having a great big hose for your water. It just, it just wants to let it through, and, and, and it doesn't change. It, and it changes the voltage ever so slightly. So you just plug your guitar into the input. This happens to be what's called a passive direct box. This is a minimum. Just put it in your bag of tricks and always have one. And then you're going to come out of here with a microphone cable. Okay. And then you're going to plug into your PA. This is the first thing that's going to make your thing sound better. And I already can tell that we're going to start blowing up the feed because people will say, 
I've been playing acoustic guitar for 20 years and I've never used a direct box and it sounds just fine. Well, that's okay. If your ears tell you that, that's okay. All right. The feed, the feed is lighting up. We had a question that said, what's a PA? Parentheses, asking for a friend. Asking for a friend, a public address system. The main portion that you would want to listen to your vocals through. So what's the difference between, an, so let's take a step back now. All right, so I said you're gonna plug this into an acoustic guitar amp as opposed to a guitar amp. So let's talk about that really quick. An acoustic guitar amp is like a mini PA system. Now I can, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this a little bit. You see that little guy right here? Okay, this is my, this is my, one, one of my acoustic amps. So it's, it's called an ultrasound. It's about 20, hmm, about 22, 24 years old. I, I absolutely love the way that sounds. I also have other acoustic amps. I have a, a Fishman, um, and then I use my Bose L2PA as an acoustic amp, okay? Um, they all have their things and they all have the, the way they sound that, just like Andy was saying, different amps, different, or different guitars, different pickups, et cetera. I happen to absolutely love that amplifier and you can't get them anymore. Um, and, uh, but anyway, so I, I don't necessarily have to plug my guitar into a direct box to go into that. But if I'm playing into a, a, a larger PA, you definitely wanna have a direct box. Now there's two kinds of direct boxes. You can get what's the passive one, but you can also get what's called an active direct box. This one happens to be by BBE. So what makes it active? So glad you asked. Jay, you have great questions. Um, an active direct box means that you have to tie it down because it's going to run all over the stage. What, Jay? What? What do you want? This is why we wanted you on the show. Uh, <laughs> real quick, before you dive back into DI, uh, Andy Lund down here in the corner has a question. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, Andy. Since we got an... uh, hi, hi, Rich. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> I will yield my time back to you very shortly. You um, since we had a question about what is a PA, um, let's also make sure that people understand that the difference between an acoustic amp and an electric guitar amp is that acoustic amps and PA systems are full range. If you're looking back, uh, Rich, he's got little studio monitors there. He's got a woofer and a tweeter, right? So that means that that speaker is capable of producing low end and high end frequencies. That's what acoustic amplifiers have built in and PA systems have built in. An electric guitar amp for a Strat or a Les Paul or something would ha only have a woofer. Right. That is correct. I yield my time back to you. You are correct. You are correct, sir. Um, yes, that's exactly uh, true. And uh, because an electric guitar has a smaller, it, it has a smaller, um, Andy, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Bandwidth. It has a smaller sound bandwidth where an acoustic guitar has all of these harmonics and stuff that you have to get out. So why would you need an active DI, DI direct box instead of a, a regular than a passive? Well, this is powered. So the way that this, get, this, this particular one gets powered, you can get some that you put batteries in, but the other ones, uh, you, your um, PA systems have something called phantom power. Um, what phantom power, um, normally refers to, and I won't make a dad joke here. I, I, there is one, but I won't use it. Come on, do it, do it, do it. No, do it. no, dad no, joke. no, 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 I'm going to save him for later. I'll save him. We for have later. a counter going, by the way, Rich. Oh, no. dad jokes. No. We have a dad joke counter. No, no dad joke on this one. But you know, sometimes you need to push that power a little bit better. So your your PA board has a button. And it sometimes will say um, like 48B or something like that. And that's a voltage that goes through the cable that powers the box. So it's, it, 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 it pushes the signal better. The, the, the PA wants to have the cleanest possible signal from your guitar. And the reason that it wants that is so that you can make it sound the way you want it to sound. What are you laughing at, Mr. Parkin? What the came through the feed? feed? The feed no, is... what came through the feed? Keep going, man. Keep going. Oh, okay. All right. So um, I actually have a little mini, so here's a little mini mixer that I will sometimes use. And this is my segue into um, all of you folks that, that play out live or in your church or whatever, and you use multiple acoustic guitars. But your 
um, soundboard or your sound man will only give you one channel. Now, um, how am I going to say this without getting haters? Here's how I'll do it. Hey, Andy, I'll ask you a question. Um, let's say that, and, and by the way, I was, I got to play with Andy a couple of years ago. What was the name of that club in El Cajon that we played at? Uh, was it the steakhouse, the steakhouse, the Riviera club? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was a lot of fun. Thanks for letting me play with you. Um, you're welcome. Yes. I had to do my blues stuff because was, you know, was it, I, was I it just one time? Stuff. Yeah, just it was only that. one time. <laughs> thanks, Chris. You, you didn't get the invite back. Hey, Chris, thanks a lot for that. Love, baby. Where I had, I had I forgotten about it, Chris, actually. Oh, oh here's, here's, here's where I was going. Here's where I was going. If you have like a Fender, let's say you're an electric player and everybody knows what a Fender Deluxe Reverb is. It's like the ultimate, you know, amp to, to, to tour with. But you have a Les Paul, a Telecaster, a Stratocaster, and a 335. Now, every time you plug that guitar into that amp, are you going to leave the tone controls the same? The answer is Andy Lund. Oh, you're not. No, 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 you're not. Probably I mean, not. You're, yeah, you're going to tweak that amp to that guitar. But some people right. think that they can take different acoustic guitars, plug them into the same channel, and expect them to sound good. And can I get an amen on that one from anybody? Yeah. So and good, good is one one way to describe it, but equal output level is another that that's a real common question how come the pickups and the guitars are not the same and the way to fix that is exactly get a mixer get a mixer get a, if so you're, you're gonna have gonna play and even if it's a little smaller on the kit. right yeah so, and mix it on right mix it on stage yourself so you know what's going on don't overdo eqs though because we're going to get to that in a minute um, but then, and then you're going to run one to your board, and then you have a little bit more control over getting these things to to align. All right. All right. Wait before you keep going down this amazing rabbit hole of signal chain. Walk us once again from the guitar to where you are now. All right. We're taking the guitar. Uh, we're taking a guitar cable from the guitar to a direct box. Okay. Then we're taking a microphone cable into the PA system. We yeah. haven't talked about effects yet. All we're trying to do is you first getting your overall, this is your overall setup. Let's okay. pretend that you're not using effects at this point. Okay. Okay. All right. Now let's begin to go down um, that rabbit hole. All right. So what kind of effects do you need for an acoustic guitar? You know, um, well, delays, you know, maybe you want a volume control. Um, you know, there is um, Ernie Ball, like for instance, here's a couple of Ernie Ball volume pedals that I have, and they're all different, all right? So this is just a regular, this is just a regular volume pedal that you can use for any electric guitar right. and some acoustic guitars, okay? But if you'll look here, there's a difference. This one, has a 25K ohm pedal. Do not ask me what that means. I do not know. But what I do know is that this is the one you want for an acoustic guitar. And the reason is, is because the volume pot on the 25K reacts better to an acoustic instrument. So as you're slowly altering your volume on stage, it, it, it's much more level. A regular volume pedal has a shelf and it's like you have to travel this far to get it to, to, to get it to bump. So if you want to use a volume pedal on stage and not worry about your on your, your guitar volume, this is this get one that has this that, that thing on there. Okay. Um, so again, why would we use a volume pedal? Because sometimes you're playing along, let's say you're playing along with a duo or a trio or a whole band. And you're playing rhythm guitar, you know, you're, you're, you're doing along just fine. And then all of a sudden you have to take a solo. And rather than, so if I've got my little thing here and I'm playing along and all of a sudden I got to take a solo, I have to come up here, turn up so I can be heard. And then I have to come back here and turn down. Just put your foot down on the pedal, bring yourself up, bring yourself back up. Awesome. And it's a much, much easier. Your volume pedal should always be 
uh, I'm keeping this easy now and we're going to expand. So, so your volume pedal is always first. Okay. okay. Now, in, I'm, I'm talking to Ernie Ball here because Ernie Ball has an output for a tuner right here. And it says tuner. So the cool thing about that is if you want to have a tuner on stage and you're not using a clip-on tuner, you're going to want to plug your tuner into here. The reason why, you may ask, again, Jay, great questions, is that you don't want your audience to hear you tune the guitar. Because as we all learned from Corey Witt when we traveled on road shows, um, tuning a guitar is very important. It's like airplane maintenance. You know, no one wants to hear it, but you're glad that they do it. So um, Ding. turn your volume off. The, this will send your 100% of your guitar signal to the tuner so you can tune without any volume on stage, and then you can go back and turn your volume off. Okay. Um, if you don't have a volume pedal that has the tuner output, then put your tuner first in the chain. So you'll go guitar to tuner, tuner to volume pedal, volume pedal to direct box, and then to the PA. Excellent. We got every, okay, so we didn't lose anybody there. Okay. Oh, we've lost people, but we brought them back. Oh, good. Good. Okay. I, I just got back. Big, <laughs> this is a big subject. The first person I knew we were going to lose was Chris Sharp. <laughs> well, because that's because they don't make left-handed volume pedals. Yes. Oh, Boom. nice one. Boom. But, I am. Got it. But Taylor Guitars makes left-handed guitars. Any model you want to get, you can get it in lefty. You see how I brought that in? Wonderful job there. All right. So after the volume pedal it is a tuner, right? Well, okay. it, it, well, tuner first or tuner out of the volume pedal. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what would come next? Well, you know, and, and a lot of that goes, goes on the player. I'll bet you that my board is probably a little bit different than Andy's board would be. So, you know, back in the 80s and the 90s, they, they had thing called chorus pedals. And as you can guess with probably my age, I still like to use a chorus pedal on my acoustic guitar. Only I, you know, you don't overdo it. I mean, it's not like we're doing the police and, you know, that thing is just, you know, cranked to the max but it does provide a really nice, uh, just a really nice effect. And there's one, and I wanna, I wanna jump into this word effect. It's called an effect for a reason. And the reason is you don't leave it on all the time. You put it on when it's necessary and when you wanna sound different because there's nothing worse, nothing, nothing worse than a guitar that going, going to listen to someone play and their guitar sounds exactly the same on every single song. You've got to mix it up. And so sometimes you put a chorus on during a, during a chorus. Sometimes you do it only in an intro. Sometimes you do it only on a solo, but it's nice to have it. And really cool chorus pedals. And now Andy, I, I happen to use a, a TC Electronics Corona. Do, do you use a chorus anymore? Uh, not so much on acoustic guitar, uh, but okay. I do have one on my pedal board for, on electric guitars. I have a, I've got a Dimension C, an old boss. Oh Dimension yeah, C. yeah, that's, that's, that's a beauty. Um, so I, I have it on there as a just in case, because I do a lot of solo stuff and the chorus, it, it makes the guitar sound a little bit bigger. Um, and like I said, I only use it as an effect. I, I don't, you know, use it a lot. Um, next, yeah, yeah, Andy. So one thing that is a, is a, First of all, this stuff can all be swapped around and, and music, music making, music recording. There are rules, but there are rules that are meant to be broken, right? To get, mm -hmm. to get things to sound the way you want. So Agreed. one thing, Jay, to answer your question, what comes next? Guitar effect pedals that you want to work on the entire signal are normally earlier in the chain. So a compressor, you want to work on the whole part of the guitar tone. An overdrive pedal, you want to work on the whole signal. Time-based effects, like Rich said, a chorus pedal or a delay pedal or a modulation pedal are normally a mixture of dry signal and wet signal. And those are usually later in the chain. Right, right. And I was gonna, yeah, and, and thanks for, for segueing that in because that's where I was going next. A lot of times what happens at this point is that you don't worry about what is next and what's next. Now you're gonna you're gonna go from the back end, like what do I want last? Yeah. 
I, you know, I definitely want reverb last. I do. Andy, what do you, what, where do you put it? Uh, I usually put it somewhere towards the end as well. Okay. Yes. But, you then, know, I got one. Yeah, in, yeah, in the feed, we got a good friend of ours, Rockwell Jacobs. He's a professional player. He plays with our good friend, Taylor Player. He's a Taylor player himself. Taylor player, okay. Brian Collins, um, does a bunch of stuff. But he wrote his signal chain, and it's pretty great. I use compressor, volume, delays, mods, verb, and then reverb, that would be, and then a looper, right? Hey, or, I was going to get to that right now. It's in my hand. I was going to talk about the looper. So, again, this, look at that. Look how this is working. Prop, the props that really brought to this show, this show are amazing. Like I'm just blown away by the the props that he has tonight. Just stellar. Yeah. A, a plus. So, so the reason that I wanted to work backwards is that, and and then now this is this is one of my loopers. It's a Digitech Jam Man. They don't make these anymore. And I, I have another one here that's a smaller version. And then I have another one in the other in the amp room. But. Um, what a looper does is that you can record on the fly. So um, what ends up happening, so you've got to catch a little fly. So while you're playing, you can just be recording and you hit the button and it'll play back and it will loop and you play on top of it. Okay. You definitely want to make sure that the looper is last and then reverb. And there's a reason for that is that because you don't want to loop now, now, just like what Andy said, now you, you might be, you, you might be trying to build a sound texture that isn't normal or isn't used all the time. So some people will put reverb in front of the looper, but you have to understand what happens. Follow the signal. You play a chord. Let's say that it went through a chorus and a compressor. And then let's say it went through your, your reverb into your looper and you recorded that and then it came back around well then you would be delaying your delay and you do that a couple times and then you delay the, the, the your delay your delay so you have to kind of think about it and your mind will blow up a little bit but you got to try different things just like andy lund said is that you, you you put them in different orders you try you see what happens and you go nope that ain't gonna work and then you move them around but in my chain for the 99 percent of the time I will run my looper, reverb is last, then out of the reverb goes into the direct box, direct box to the PA. Awesome. Uh, all right. So Rich, yeah. it's almost that time of the show where we gotta filter through some of these questions. Okay. So if but I- Can I have another two minutes really quick first? Oh, you're I'm, gonna- I'm gonna ask for an extension. And the reason I'm asking for an extension is that when we talked about direct boxes, Shut up, Jay. When we talk about direct boxes, I wanted to bring up, um, Andy, I think that you, you use one of these, I think, don't you, Andy? I have something similar that's made by LR Bags. I have a pair acoustic DI. Oh, okay. So this is the Fishman Aura. Now this is a direct box, but it also has all kinds of EQ, bass treble mids and filters and stuff but it's also a direct box. And what's very cool about this, and this, this is the platinum. This is what I normally will use for my direct box. And the reason is a, is a, is a couple of different things. The first reason is it's really cool. It sounds really good, all right? I can tone shape my stage volume or my stage sound. I can make my guitar sound exactly the way I wanna hear it on the stage but I have to feed it to the PA. Now, if I send a signal that I've doctored to the PA, the sound man is gonna have a real hard time resetting the sound to the room. Because if I send, let's say I send him a, a ton of bass response and a ton of mid range, and he's trying to suck that right back out again, it makes my guitar sound muddy, all right? With this box, I can send him the, the, the signal right from the guitar. So I can mix my EQ on stage. He can mix his EQ to the house. D does that make sense? Totally. Okay. And then the last thing that I want to show everybody that's my latest 
my latest buy, and I and, and this is not a commercial. The Fishman. This is called a Fishman Tone Deck, and it's made specifically for acoustic guitar players. And what's really cool about that, this this thing is amazing because it has delays, reverbs, choruses, um, filters, built-in tuners, direct boxes. It's really cool. I would check one of these out. They make ES2 sound great. Okay, hey, now Jay, I'm giving it this, back to you. This, this, this stuff that we, this last little segment here, this is probably the most, if somebody wants to improve their sound live, these right. kind of devices, this is the first thing that you that I would buy, uh, that I would recommend. Some sort of a little box that has a, gives you a volume control and tone controls because you're always playing in different rooms and different rooms need different treatment, right? And a built-in DI to go to the PA system. And, and there's a lot of companies like Fishman and LR Bags and that make really nice little devices. They're super useful. And um, it's, it's, the, it's the very first thing that I would recommend somebody who's yeah. maybe unsatisfied or wants a little more control on stage. That's what you need. Yeah. yeah. And, and I know that if I'm playing somewhere, I, I will make a loop. So I'll, I'll just put right, I'll, I'll put a, like a, a 60 second loop into my looper. Then I walk it out of the stage and I listen to myself playing from the looper. And I go, oh, I, I need less low end. I need some more high end. And it's not somebody else playing my guitar. It's me playing my guitar. I, I don't have any overages of hearing the actual guitar. I'm truly hearing the electrify signal. And then I mix that. Drives everybody in the room crazy because for about eight or nine minutes, they're hearing the same loop of chords and stuff. But that's the best way to set your sound. Yeah. I eight would, or nine minutes? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Long eight, time. eight or nine minutes. But that's like... <laughs> For me, I mix I mix live sound quite a bit, so um, it, it I I would agree. You need to play your guitar, and you need to hear your guitar to try these things out. These are all really interesting tips and tricks and little things that we could nerd out on forever. We just did um, for forty seven minutes. It has been forty seven minutes of the biggest nerddom I've ever experienced of my in in my time doing this show. The feed is blowing up. Yes, sharp. I have the first question for you, Rich. Let's go. We're going to go into Q&A right we're now. We're going to go into okay, the so feed. So throw us your questions in the feed, but Rich, I'm taking the first one. Okay. We've gone down some rabbit holes tonight of, of live, um, the signal chain in a, in a live setting, right? Let's pull that back for a second and say I have just my acoustic guitar and an amp at home and I want to get into this. What's your, what are the first steps into working into effects with acoustic guitars, what would you recommend for someone who might be watching right now going, I want to get into this, but we're talking real deep right now. That's a, that's yeah. a great question. Um, quick answer. If you like the overall tone, you can look for an effects, um, like a multi-effect thing. This is one of mine. I have four or five different ones, but this one happens to be a, um, uh, this is a TC electronic, but it's a really clean and it has delays choruses, you know, a, a bunch of different stuff in there that you can, that you can really easily mess around with and see what you like and what you don't. What is the first, I might even back that question up again, a little bit further delay. Let's not talk about effects. Let's oh. talk about the first item in your signal chain. Would you buy a DI box? Would you buy an acoustic DI? Not if I'm not if I'm playing at home. No. No, because I'm plugging into an acoustic guitar amp. Okay. That's fine. Okay. The reason the reason that is is because a, a high impedance guitar cable can travel 15 feet or 10, 12 feet without any signal loss. But when you're talking about running into a PA system, sometimes you're traveling 20 feet, 30 feet, 100 feet from the from the mains from the PA. And if you run a high impedance guitar cable that long, you will lose high end, you will lose frequency response yeah. and it won't sound clean. So that's why it needs to get changed from high impedance to low impedance at the direct box to travel a long distance. Guitar geeks call that tone sucking. Interesting. All right, let's go to this Sharpie. You got any questions ready? Um, you take the first one. Me? Yep. There's so many questions, it's crazy. <laughs> Flowing through right now in the room next to the amp room it's called the preamp 
<laughs> oh yeah, there's. <laughs> you're nice. getting shown up for some dad jokes in here. Dad jokes, yeah. Um, does anyone remember Andy Lund's recommendations, comments, tuners in the past episode? Andy, this question's for you. You have a recommendation for some tuners. Um, good ones. In other words, Chicken of the sea, uh, my, that's a good the, tuner. Well, yeah, the thing is that the tuners, electronic tuners have become a race to the bottom in the last 15 years because of technology, right? You think, think about this, you're buying a, you're paying a really nice guitar, a Taylor guitar, you spend a lot of money on it and you say, I'm going to buy this $5 tuner. Well, how accurate do you think that that piece is going to be? Not very accurate. TC Electronics uh, is a good company. Spend some money and get, yeah, there you go. Is that what that is? That's a yeah, the TC, two. right? Yeah. Right. How much are those? 50, 60 bucks, something like that? Yeah, I think I paid 50. Yeah. So just just do that. And, and, and you can actually, you can witness this. You can go to a guitar store. You can buy a $5 tuner and you can clip it on the headstock and you can buy a good one and clip it on the headstock and you can tune the guitar moving the machines and watch you'll see one doesn't move at all because it doesn't have the ability to track in the smaller increments that the more expensive one does all right what about well, another uh, really good what, one is what about you can a, online you can get a uh, the peterson on your phone and yeah. i think it's i think it's 15 dollars for the yeah, peterson yeah. strobe tuner on your phone someone just said the peterson strobe in there um, yeah, the, I, I what have about a, what about high end on my phone? It's awesome. The Diadario uh, guitar tools tuner. It's awesome. Yep. yep, that's a good one too. Quality cables. Yeah, good question. Yeah. What that was a question that came in here. Like, what are you looking for when you go into the shop? Obviously, there's entire rows of cables. What's the go to? Sometimes they say like pay more and save, right? So you don't have to go back in and keep buying this this uh, cheaper cable, what, what do you want to go grab? What, what are those options? Um, personally, I look for, uh, if I'm going to buy a cable and not make one, um, I'll use, I'll look for Switchcraft ends because Switchcraft for me in the past has always worked really well. There was a company called Quantum and they made what was called oxy-free cable. And the idea was, is that when they soldered it together, it was like in an oxygen-free environment or whatever. And I have to tell you, I've had those cables for going on 20 years and they have not failed me and they're amazing. Andy Lund, what do you think? I agree. I think that the, the ones that stay away from are the molded, ends ca molded end cables, the ones that you can't repair, you can't resolder. Those are junk and they, they're cheap, um, but they won't, if they break, they break, they're done. But most Switchcraft is a good connector that, that fits most um, output jacks really well. I would agree yeah. with that too. And what Andy means by molded end cables, they have like a plastic kind of covering on them. You can't pull the the input apart. I would also stay away from this. This is a molded end cable. Can't yep. can't change. It's it's encased in plastic. Right. Another thing for cables to think about um, is cables have feelings too. Um, the way it. that you wrap your cables and the way that you care for your cables will make them last for a long time. Here's an example. When we are in our video room or a recording room at Taylor Guitars, I do not let Sharpie wrap the cables. I will wrap <laughs> them all. But my cables <laughs> last for a long time, but that is a big one to think yeah. about. When I gig, no one touches my cables. You know, leave them alone. I'll take care of them. Yeah. Don't there step are plenty of videos on YouTube to learn how to wrap over under and make sure that your cables have a little bit, they're loose and they just, they, they just trust us. You want yeah. cables to last for decades. That's what you got to do. You got to be able to maintain your cables. The second thing is for me, when I'm looking for cables, um, earlier in the, you know, early two thousands, there was a thing where brass plated or gold plated cables. It was a thing. I would not recommend those. They actually, they actually build a coating onto the top of a cable so it ruins your input jack. So get stuff that is naturally made, right? Doesn't have plating or coating on it as well. Right. right. Um, got a question in the feed. Mindset differences in mixing portable PA like a Bose versus a big built-in system. Uh, say that again now. 
What is the mindset and differences? Is there a mindset and differences? What are the differences? Like if you're going into a system, like a, a, a place, a venue, like a church mm -hmm. that has mm -hmm. a big PA, right? How are you going to think about EQ versus your little Bose system? You know, that's a great question. And, and a lot of it, re, it, it goes right back to the sound men. And as Andy Lund and I would probably agree, we would say 90% of sound men are partially deaf and they shouldn't be mixing sound um, at all, ever. Or really cranky, always in a bad way. They're really cranky, but you wanna give them, uh, if it was a great big room, I'd wanna give them the cleanest possible signal that I could. Chances are, if they have a nice PA, they have active direct boxes. So you're gonna get a really good signal. And the other thing is to make sure you don't crank the volume of your guitar down so low that the signal doesn't go through and they don't get a clean signal. Because then as soon as you turn it up a little bit, then it's gonna overload their gain stage and then you're gonna sound like um, poop. Poop. Got it. Poop. Hey, we skipped over a really basic thing, okay? This is something that we need to talk about because every road show, I go see people playing gigs and, and stuff and, and I look at their guitar and it's, uh, it looks like this. It looks like this, all right? Why? Because it's louder. It's louder. More bass, more trouble, more volume, right? All right, wrong, completely wrong. Uh, starting with the AS2 system, with the preamp, there are indent controls, right, that are at 12 o'clock. That's where you send your signal to the sound guy, sound girl, right there. Because you have room to move on all sides of that. You can turn the treble down. You can turn the treble up. You can turn the volume down. You can turn the volume up. If you start by diming it, first of all, you're smashing the input of the mixer, right? It's, it's so hot all the time. It's like your, your foot is on all the way down on the accelerator, right? There's no dynamic range. So this is a very basic spot to start with ES2 and any, actually any pickup system, any right. preamp system, give it some room, give it some headroom on all, all sides of the tone, pro, tone, tone pots as well as the volume pot. And one of the things I absolutely love about ES2 is the fact that it does not have a mid-range control. A lot of people will, at the road shows, they say, why don't you have a mid-range? It's because I don't want you screwing with the mid-range because the guitar is a mid-range instrument and the ES2 is active. So when you're moving your bass and your treble around, it's building its own EQ curve. So it, it's, it's very intuitive to not have a mid-range. Nerds. You guys are nerds and totally. I love it. Hey, there's, a, there's, a, there's more of a statement in here that you guys might be able to help with. Um, John says, I'm not happy with my Taylor Expression System 1. That was the statement. Um, is there a way or an answer or some advice that you could give him to make him ha happy? Yeah, I would. Um, uh, and, and Andy, you can you know jump in too, please. I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I would say this. The, the, the person that, it, that has, first of all, has anybody seen the Dave Grohl movie called, um, it's called Studio, uh, it's called Sound City. All right, Sound City. Great documentary. On, a, on the very, the, the world's best mixing board ever built. The guy that built that board is named Rupert Neve. Rupert Neve and David Hostler invented the ES-1 because Rupert Neve said that I can't get a good acoustic guitar tone recorded. So what's interesting is, is that we do hear a lot of people say, I, I don't like my ES-1, I don't like the way it sounds. And you're saying, my God, are you telling me that your ears are better than Rupert Neve's? And, and you have to say that very nicely you know, I don't want anybody to get mad at me or upset, but you know, this guy built the world's best board and he also helped design ES-1. So that was, that was the background. So now to answer his question, my response would be, don't forget that ES-1 is balanced, which means it is like a stereo cable, okay? And that is the way that you're gonna get your ES-1 to sound the best, is use a balanced cable. So what does that mean? It means that it's like it's a quarter inch headphone jack. There's two stripes on it, okay, like a stereo headphone. And then it goes into a XLR, like a microphone. And then you plug that into your direct box, and then your direct box goes to your PA. And I can almost guarantee you, you will fall in love with the ES-1. Excellent. 
Yes, we are deep in Nerdville right yeah, now. Yeah, we we got there. We got to Nerdville. <laughs> uh, you send your tailor in for an expression system two upgrade. Okay, there's that. Mind blown on the mid range top uh, response. Sharpie, do you got any more questions? Hey, we're just so you know, we're at seven p.m. I think we need to do two minutes of sports. We need to do Sharpie's question. I think we got some trivia for some giveaways tonight too. So I like wow, that. that went Keep fast. that in mind. I we, like. We could that. have gone another hour on this. <laughs> we could, especially yeah. with you, Rich. All right. Uh, so we hey, are... Andy. Hey, I, I learned from Andy. Everything I know, I learned from somebody else. That's wonderful, Rich Cachado. You went down the rabbit hole of signal chain. And we appreciate you for it. There's going to be a ton of questions. So I think that we're going to have to find a way to fit you back into this cycle of shows for sure. Right. Would love you, it. You can come back we should and talk do about a, all 32 we should do cars. A rapid fire. We should do a so rapid unlike fire. Unlike playing a live show with Andy Lund, I, I might be able to get a call back. Yeah, you might be able to get a call back. Yep. I, uh, yep. All right. So here's the deal. We have a segment on the show we call Sharpie's Question. Sharpie. Okay. Sharpie is going to ask you a question. Oh, all before right. Before he asks you a question, Mr. Lund is going to play a song. Okay. All right. Nice setup, Jay. <laughs> Yeah, Rich can play the guitar. This cat really smokes. What will Sharpie ask him? Will he want some more dad jokes? <laughs> yeah. Here comes Sharpie's question. Yeah, Rich, I, I had a lot of fun with you tonight, but you only did five dad jokes. I'm pretty disappointed in that. Yeah, I know. I tried to keep it on point. You got you got work to do next time. Um, Rich, my question for you tonight is this. You have a lot of guitars, but there's always room for one more guitar. One artist of your choice, you get to take a guitar from their collection. Mark Knopfler. That was the quickest answer I've ever had. <laughs> why because he has the touch his touch on any guitar that he's ever played has been amazing and maybe there'll be some dna left on there where i can sound like him oh okay you want the juice oh actually you know what there's two there's also phil kagi mm. mm -hmm. mm. why phil kagi amazing acoustic player just out of out of the park out, out of sight and he only has four fingers that's amazing hey how many hours a day do you play guitar i try to do an hour but and it's not really playing it's, it's just exercising because i'm getting older and as i get older i find that sometimes a, i might lock up or something so i'm trying to stay stay fresh oiled and well oiled. Band, so that's kind of fun that's amazing okay Your guitar working out yeah, I'm guitar sorry? workouts. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, cool. We're going to go in two minutes to sports. Do you have a song for us, Andy, for this? Or do you just oh. want me to go into it? <laughs> sports do ball time. Sports thing. I had a song last a week. Question. Question. All right. You had a song? I had a song last week, but uh, but you didn't you didn't pay attention to it, so I didn't write a new one. Uh, I paid attention to it in dog beers. I only had one. <laughs> no. All right. So... I'm wearing this Phillies hat for you, Mr. Rich Gachado. You know that. All right. Okay. Those of you who don't know, this is a batting practice hat, but this is a also a spring training batting batting practice hat. See, I collect hats, so these things are very important to me. But does it have number forty nine for Jake Arrieta on it? It does not have number forty nine for Jake Arrieta on it. However, I I'm a big fan of Jake Arrieta. He's a good dude. Good dude. All right. So here's the deal. I experienced. We Sharpie was there. Right? Were you there? What? We experienced a Phillies game with you here in San Diego. Oh, yes. So that we're gonna was a go, lot of fun. We're going to go with a little bit of uh, Phillies trivia. You ready? Two minutes of sports. Well, <laughs> I'll ask another question first. First question. Do you watch baseball games without fans? No, I use my air conditioner. I, I don't use a fan. Oh, <laughs> Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> Got the dad. Note, that was a setup. Note. You knew it. All right. Yeah. Here we go. 
The Phillies won the World Series. The last two World Series years were. My father, if my father was alive, God rest his soul, and I don't know the answer to this. Uh, was it 2004? And, and, and 2008. And before that was... 19 something or other. Yeah, you win. Good job. <laughs> there it is. Eight, 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 all eight. right. Good job. Two minutes of sports. All right. Here we go. Now we got trivia for you guys. Yeah, Andy. I have one I have one thing to suggest, Jay. I know this is your show, I know, but I I can make a suggestion. Yeah, please. I have a, a two minutes of sports song. Yeah. And maybe I'll it's kind of a question. It's a question. So okay. I'll play it and then we'll see if anybody can answer it next week. On the I show. love it. Listen, listeners, not you guys. That's okay. good. We're going to do that. Okay. Two minutes of sports, listening, and we will give away a bag of picks. Okay. So it goes like this, Jay. Hey, Jay, here's a question. What's two minutes of sports in dog years? <laughs> All right, next week. Next week they have to answer, right? What's two minutes of sports in dog years? That's, that's gonna be rough. <laughs> oh my oh! gosh, they're coming oh, out. All right. all right, he's coming into his own, folks. I've tried t shirts so we many. We got t shirts. All right, we got two so trivia many questions. Times it's so many dad jokes all day long. <laughs> from like lobby meetups till it's time to like go to the next hotel and and go to our separate rooms it's dad jokes all day i'm glad that you're coming into your own on the show now rich at 707 all right here we go we got t-shirts i got two t-shirts to give away two taylor t-shirts to give away you guys know the rules for the questions we will ask one question and the person <laughs> they're answering your question andy in the feed which is great uh this is great there are a lot of laugh out louds in here in the feed. Um, but the questions, Sharpie, do you want to take the first question and I'll take the second question? Okay. Um, so wait, the is, there rules, is there a song the for this, Andy, or are we allowed to just go? Hold on. Back. Oh, okay, cool. The rules, the rules are the very first person to type the answer in the feed wins the first shirt. And then we will ask another question. And then the very first person after we ask them the, the second question will win a shirt too. All right. We, we hold on one. I do have a question on this. We've no. never let Gabe answer before. Are we going to let him try tonight? Gabe? Yeah. Was no. he on good rules behavior? Gabe can't answer. <laughs> Gabe can't answer. All right. All right. No, okay. Forever. And he, no. he already has this shirt. Hey, yeah. Gabe. Gabe, I will send you. I'll comp you a shirt. Okay. Oh, oh wow. All right. All right. I'm All right, going. Here we go. Go for your first question, Sharpie. All right. All right, everybody. So what year did we release the GS Mini series? What year did we release the GS Mini? <laughs> Oops. So good. The pause, the delay is great. <laughs> like a 10 Panther second pause is like boom. Oh, Stan. Stan the man. Stan. Stan wins 2010. If, yeah, I if you it. haven't seen the video that um, we put up on social a little bit ago, you got to check that out. It's probably already on YouTube as well, right, Jay? Did you throw it on there? Um, the 10 year anniversary of the GS Mini was this year, turned 10 years old. So, 10 years right old. Stan. It was in June. It would have been Summer Nam 2010. You know, it's really too bad that the guy that won wasn't named Jack since he played the Jeopardy theme because you could have said, What do you say, Jack? I could have, but I didn't. It didn't yes, work that did. way. All right. Shirt number two. We got See, shirt Pat number two. Jack is the guy's name. <laughs> all right. What do you say, all right. This is a good one. All right. You guys ready for shirt number two? Stan, we love you as well. Yes. Right. Wait, hold on, too. For Stan and whoever's about to win this, 
Make sure you send your mailing address to primetime at taylorguitars.com so we can get that out to you. And size. Oh, and your size. Yeah, this is a size item. <laughs> and your size. <laughs> we'll just send them a sub We'll send them a small. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Last question, and then we're going to wrap up the show. All right. Ready? The last question is, how many... You like the pause? Yeah. How many USA-made shapes... Acoustic guitar shapes are in the Taylor line. How many USA May shapes are in the Taylor line? Hmm. <clears throat> the awkward pause. Speaking of pause, did you hear about the bear that walked into a bar? <laughs> <laughs> What's with the big pause? Wow. No one has answered it. Uh, Reed did. Wait, who? Reed did. Reed. 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 Stan Reed. Reed. Question right. How many shapes are there, Sharpie? Why? What are they, Rich? There would be the Grand Concert, the Grand Auditorium, the Grand Symphony, the Grand Pacific, and the Grand Orchestra. Yes, we do not have a regular dreadnought in the Taylor line, in the USA made Taylor line anymore. There are five shapes. How many more will there be before we're, we're done with this show? We're not allowed to talk about it. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, read. Boom, that's right. You answered the question correctly. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us on this nerdiest episode of Taylor Primetime to date. Totally. Takes the cake. Absolutely. This takes the cake. <laughs> it's insane how nerdy you are. We love you so much, Rich. We will have you back and we will talk more about your bunker that you play guitar <laughs> in. And thanks for not bringing up the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame thing. That was awesome of you to not do that. What? But you're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But that's beside the point. You're a Hall of Famer. I'm a Hall of Farmer. <laughs> there you go. All right, ladies cool. and gentlemen, thank you once again for nerding out with us for this long, fun Tuesday night, Tuesday evening. We know you're busy. You could be doing so many other things, but you hang out with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rich, for coming on. Thank you, yes, Rich Sharp, for being a bearded, left-handed player. And Andy Lund, once again, you come to deliver these songs day in, week in and week out. We appreciate it. Next week, come back and hang out with us. We are going to have Chris Cosgrove on and talk about supply chain. He's going to talk about wrestling boa constrictors. So it would be something that you need to participate in. Forest stories. Yes. Forest stories are going to be really fun. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for hanging out with us on Taylor Primetime. It was great as always. Andy. Take it away. What was it? What was it? That was prime time. What the heck was it? What was that? Well, that was prime time. Thanks to Rich Cachado for being on the show. Rich plays Mean Blitz Guitaro. He's in the Hall of Fame, you know. <laughs> Thanks for your research and your signal chain advice. Your dad no jokes sure will swell. <laughs> and the props, they was nice. <laughs> on prime time, on Tuesday. Oh my God. Every Tuesday, all time, time. Good night, everybody. See you next week. Thanks, Rich. Good night, everybody. See you next week. Awesome.